Hey guys, this is uh, Vincent, and I'm just going to do a quick uh, review of Luminar 4, uh, which was released back in uh, November of 2019. So I've had a few months to uh, play around with it, and uh, I'm just going to let you know or give you my thoughts on Luminar 4. The most important uh, issue or uh, topic that comes up with uh, Luminar 4 is is its uh, performance or its sta stability and uh, majority of the time I didn't have any issues until uh, recently recently this month in uh, May uh, what happened was it crashed and uh, I had to uh, restart Luminar 4 through a uh, backup uh, catalog it didn't take any it didn't take too much time I just needed to uh, research it on Google or on uh, Luminar's uh, web page and I was able to resolve the issue but other people have been having uh, bigger issues with uh, Luminar 4 uh, regarding its performance and uh, they pretty much couldn't uh, use it anymore it wasn't worth their time or their uh, money uh, regarding those issues I'll put a link to my uh, blog post it's in the comments section uh, so you'll have a chance to see it but Overall, Luminar 4 works for me, other than that one uh, hiccup where I had to uh, restore it from a backup catalog. And uh, so let's just get started with uh, the review now. Uh, it'll be pretty quick. I'm not going to go over all the uh, tools or feature it has. I'll just give you my input on uh, some of them. So right now I'm looking at like the uh, film strip on the left of uh, some of my photos from uh, Patagonia in Argentina and at the bottom is uh, the looks or the luminar looks also known as uh, presets so they do come with uh, quite a bit of uh, luminar looks uh, usually i take landscape or travel photos so i'm just going to go to the luminar looks uh, landscape section and they have a few uh, presets here and one thing I do notice uh, with the Luminar 4 on my iMac is it does take some time or there is a little bit of a lag when I'm trying to view the preview. So as you can see here, once I change to a different look, I'm looking at about a one or two second delay. I know that's not a lot of time, but uh, coming from uh, Lightroom or uh, Capture One, <laughs> it can make a big difference. Uh, so I'm just pointing that out. And the library of Luminar 4 is pretty simple. You're just pretty much importing or uh, adding images uh, from your Windows Explorer or through your uh, Mac uh, Finder. Uh, the sorting or the organization of the images, it's not as comprehensive as a Lightroom or a Capture One. It's not a big deal if you're trying to get like a budget software to fulfill your needs. Uh, but uh, I find Luminar 4 it's not a replacement for uh, Lightroom or Capture One. It's more like of a, uh, what, what would you say, it's more of a uh, add-on or a complement to those software. Or if you're just looking to save some money and you're an amateur photographer or a professional photographer, uh, Luminar 4, it's a good choice. Uh, but once again, keep in mind, you, you'll probably have to try it out first to make sure you don't have any uh, performance issues. Uh, what I can say is uh, there hasn't been as many performance issues that I've been noticing in the uh, Luminar uh, community that I follow. So that's good news, but uh, once again, I recommend you, you try it out before you uh, blow your money. And here on the right side is a couple of folders I imported. And uh, these folders, I pretty much imported it and uh, from my Lightroom uh, catalog or from my Lightroom files. So if I click here and show in Finder, these are all my uh, Lightroom uh, uh, Lightroom folders uh, for uh, where my images are located in the uh, Lightroom catalog database. But uh, what Luminar 4 is doing is it's it's a catalog is uh, checking three of the folders I selected, which is Argentina, Cambodia, and Norway. You can also just like drag and drop single images into Luminar 4 to edit it. Or you can just uh, open and then open edit with to uh, edit photos in uh, Luminar 4. So now I'm going to just go into some of the features or uh, some of the interesting tools that the Luminar 4 has. 
So I just have some pre-selected images that I want to look with the uh, favorites. And by the way, you can like tag or color label your images here, right at the bottom. There's no uh, keyword tagging though with uh, Luminar 4. So one of the big uh, tools or features that Luminar 4 promotes is its uh, portrait enhancing or its skin enhancing. So if I click on the edit module here, and I just click on this tab here, which is portrait. And I'm going to go to the AI skin enhancer. So this is a uh, free stock photo that I got from uh, Pixabay. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a link to that in the uh, description. So this image, you can see uh, the individual or the girl here has quite a bit of uh, acne. So with the AI skin, skin enhancer, I can remove a lot of that. Uh, I'm just going to crank it all the way up because I already tested it and it's soft in the skin but you need to click on this defects removal here uh, to get rid of most of it and it did a pretty good job uh, here and uh, there's a little bit of a uh, artifact or a messed up spot right here so what you can do is you can click on the edit mask brush click on erase I'll change the size I'll just paint over that to get that quickly fixed and click on done well, one thing you notice I missed this spot here so I'm just gonna give you an example of the uh, retouching tool here which is here erase and one thing you're gonna see about its uh, retouching tool or its healing brush tool on the uh, clone stamp is it's not uh, dynamic so what I mean by that is like I'm going to paint over it this here and once I let go of the mouse uh, it doesn't uh, automatically update I have to click on done so after I click after I clicked on done uh, then it gets uh, updated so if you're used to doing a lot of retouching or removing uh, artifacts or objects or any dust spots or anything along those lines in an image uh, it can get annoying if you're doing uh, selective or local uh, retouching in uh, Luminar 4 so I thought I'll just uh, point that out for you and just going back to the uh, portrait or the uh, skin enhancer here so as you can see it's not selected it's because, I'm on, because it has layers so Luminar 4 does support layers so I'm just going to go back to the original layer here and I'll go back to the portrait tab click on portrait enhancer so I'm just going to show you some of the pretty cool tools that it has here for enhancing the a face but uh, most of these won't work uh, just because it's blurred out here and one good thing about the uh, portrait tools or the skin enhancer is that it can recognize faces even when it's at an angle so you can see this person is looking away from the camera and looking down so it did a pretty good job of auto masking and uh, correcting the area so and as you can see the s spot here that I corrected I'm on uh, I'm on the background layer so it's still there but that's fine so one thing I want to show you is uh, the slim face here. The slim face, obviously just by its uh, name, it'll reduce or thin out the face. And uh, I do want to point out that it's not made, it's not made for like uh, individuals that have a, a chubby face. It's mainly for uh, lens distortion, but people are going to use it any way they want. And like the lip saturation, it's not going to recognize it, but just because it's blurred out. Uh, but if it was in focus, uh, it would it would uh, recognize it. So let me just go back to the upper layer here. Okay, so I guess that's enough for the uh, portraits. Uh, actually, I'll demonstrate another one here uh, with the uh, whitened teeth. Just click on the create a tab here or the portrait tab. And I'm going to, uh, this is a, another stock photo I got. And uh, with the teeth whitening, we can like fully whiten the teeth. Actually, I'm incorrect. It doesn't fully whiten the teeth. It just uh, reduces the saturation of the yellow. 
so what you would need to do is to get it fully white is uh, you would need to uh, create a mask and then uh, desaturate a little bit more and increase the highlights if you want to do it uh, manually but this is a pretty good start if you're only uh, doing a little bit of minimal uh, retouching or a whitening of the teeth and another thing I can show you is the slim face here again let's see how that looks or the enlarging of the eyes okay and now I'm going to go to another image which is one of my landscape or one of my uh, travel photos here now let me just try lining this up this one I took in uh, Cambodia I believe so I'm just going to rotate it a little bit Okay, so one of the main selling points of uh, Luminar 4 is it's an AI sky replacement and uh, pretty much it just auto masks or detects the sky and then uh, replaces it. So it comes with like a predefined uh, or built in uh, skies but you can also load your own. And I'm just going to go with this Galaxy one and as you can see with the uh, AI sky replacement it also relates the scene so to make sure like everything blends in uh, good or there's a smooth uh, transition from the sky uh, to the foreground and if you need to relate the ski sky more you can just uh, use the relight scene uh, slider here there's also other adjustments or other sliders to position or totally mess up your sky if you want And one thing you need to know about the sky replacement uh, uh, tool is that it's not always perfect or it might look perfect. So like here, if I zoom in, it's a little bit off here. So I would need to drop it down a little bit. Actually, that's too much. So now that looks a little bit better. Another thing I can do is use the closed gaps slider. Sometimes that works, sometimes that doesn't. So it doesn't work in that case. So the best thing to do is just change the horizon to uh, make it look a little bit better. And so you do got to be careful. Like here, it messed it up. So I might have to bring it down lower. And I still got to play around with it. So it's not always uh, perfect especially if there's like uh, reflections off the sky it can mess it up but this is not too bad and so and some sky backgrounds work better than others let me try the horizontal blending here I think I got it. It looks much better now. And anything with the sky, you can also mask it or uh, like mask it away if you need to make uh, local adjustments to it. Uh, but I want to show you a, an example of the sky here where it doesn't blend as easily. Uh, just because the clouds that are here, there's a little bit of haze. Uh, it's a soft image, and uh, I'll just show you an example of how like the sky messes up if I can. So like the relighting here is off and you'll need to manually make adjustments but let me see if I can get a much worse image like it's off here again so it really comes down to what image you use but again you can retouch it and uh, correct it if you need to and going back to this image here I'm going to show you the uh, augmented sky. So the augment, augmented sky replacement or AI augmented sky, what it does is it just allows you to add uh, objects to it. So if I want to add a moon, I can go ahead and do that. And then I can move it around and uh, resize it. And you got to be careful like what you place in the sky, depending on if you want to make it look realistic or not. Uh, what else could I put? I could put birds. 
this looks pretty good or it looks a little bit more realistic and uh, yeah so that's the uh, AI sky replacement and the uh, augmented sky uh, they do it's pretty good since it auto masks uh, pretty quickly and sometimes you do have to uh, fine-tune it it can come in handy if you're doing like a real estate photography and you're taking pictures of uh, houses from the outside and uh, want to spruce up the sky a little bit and let me show you the sun rays here I don't use it often and then you can just move it around one of the things I notice about uh, Luminar or Skyline when they're uh, report when they're uh, promoting luminars, they really focus in a lot in on the uh, sky replacement, augmented sky, as well as the uh, skin enhancer and uh, port portrait enhancer uh, technologies. They're really good, and they save users a lot of time, especially if uh, if you're beginning, if you're a beginner or amateur uh, photo editor. Uh, but they also have like pretty cool or pretty good. Uh, color grading so let me see if I can find those so they got like a photo with filter effect a lot of these I don't even remember exactly what they do I always have to look it up or I have to uh, play around with the uh, slider and if you want to reset anything you can just click on the reset or this uh, arrow here and they got split toning as well so I can change the highlights to a certain color and the shadows to a different color and pretty much most of the tools or all the tools you can mask sections away and let me add a creative look to this or replace the sky see how, how a good job it does Oh, that's not bad. They did a pretty good job. So with the color grading and the sky replacement, I made this image uh, pop a little bit more. If you want to save time, you could play around with the uh, Luminar 4 looks. And let me just reset this image to its original. I know there's one more good or one more decent color grading tool here. Let me see if I can find it. Oh, oh they actually have lookup tables as well. Which I totally forgot about. And here's the classic sepia tone, which isn't that great on this image, but they do have LUTs. Let me reset this. also have a glow effect which doesn't go that good on this image but it might look better on this one right here and as you probably noticed there was a little bit of a delay switching back between the images so that's a small little performance issue this one still has the uh, sky so let me reset that go back to the glow Yeah, the glow didn't make this image look any better, but uh, you get my point. Like the the software has a lot of good uh, features or tools, but it has quite a bit of uh, or quite a few uh, color grading options if you want to uh, make your image pop or give it a little bit of a vibrant look. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, Luminar 4 review. If you liked it, uh, leave the leave a comment or uh, smash the like button. Have a good one.